So the rest, like protecting the Dharma. How do we protect the Dharma? I can expand using the fun because we're going to end chapter three today. So we might as well go in a uh, bad way. Uh, so I'm going straight to uh, uh, protecting the Dharma because it's quite close to us. Um, without the sage teaching, like what I'm reading right now, uh, we do not, we, it's as in we do not have our eyes. Without eyes to clear the path to us, how can we, how can we uh, understand what is right, what is wrong, not what we learn, what is real goodness, what is false goodness. And protecting the Dharma means you're protecting the eyes of all sentient beings. You're protecting their eyes so that they are not blind and walk into the wrong path. So it's not just about protecting this religion or that religion. It's about protecting um, the heart, uh, not the physical heart, the heart, the spirits of this community, uh, keeping them alive, keeping them humane, keeping them kind. Uh, otherwise, it becomes like what we have experiencing, started to experiencing, a machine, a mechanical society. Everyone's just trying to produce as much as much. And their heart is empty. Not in the Buddhist way, but empty as in like a wood, a stone. They become machine, mechanical. Or their creativity is bound. Their life is miserable. So... <sighs> So this is why we need to protect Dharma because it helps them to liberate from that uh, problems. Um, be respectful towards the sage because every sage right, is um, thinking about the world. If they are thinking only about themselves, they are no longer sage. They are normal people like us. But if they are a strive, a aspiring to think just for the world, right? Like small sage think about this world, big sage think about the universe, the whole thing, because their vision gets bigger and bigger as they cultivate deeper and deeper insights and meditative tranquility. Um, respecting them, it's not about them, it's about what they represent. They represent a potential of humankind to extend their wisdom that goodness, that ability to actually be a human. Um, in Chinese words, human is equal to heaven and earth. That importance of humanity is as powerful as what we call it the heavens, which is the one that, you know, the weathers, the climates, the whole uh, laws of cause and effect, and Tian Di Ren, San Fa. Uh, and then the earth that nurtures the whole uh, land, like nurtures us, that is our whole family and generations to come. Humans is as equally important as them. To be that sort of human, you need to have um, a heart that is as big as heaven and a heart that can take as much as the earth. Only then you will be considered as, in Taoism, we call it zhenren, real human. So, <laughs> so if we use that kind of mindset, I diverge, but it's still under the point. If you use that mindset to think about our, our current society, ourselves, especially, we've been a fake person for a long time, a fake human for a long time. And a real human is the one that, you know, live with the heavens when the earth is one. In a very practical way, a sense, everything they do is not machinery, it's not calculative. Everything they do is as natural as, you know, the spring blossoms, the winter, uh, they will. Uh, chun, 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 uh, sorry, spring blossoms, autumn leaf falls, everything has a season. So this is kind of the mindset we should have. And sage always follows this law. They will never forget about this law. And they, they will always use that law to benefit everyone. So it's something we need to use our life to experience. How do we become a real human? I think, think about that. Uh, we can think about activism and all that, but that one is still very pretentious. It's not enough. It's not getting to the heart. The heart is the heart of the matter is the heart. Uh, the heart of the matter is the heart. So the root of it, the the mindset, like Master Ching Kong mentioned about the uh, water experiment. If the um, kindness of the people has accumulated to a certain level, it can purify the environment. And they tested it in Japan using a lake as an example. Um, 
why isn't because we are in the scientific world we should use this example um this lake is dirty in japan and this old monk uh, was invited to host is a buddhist monk host a ceremony just maybe a chan, uh, chanting uh, sutra. Actually, he was not told to chant sutra. He was told to lead everyone to think about one thing and one thing only. And all the disciples, about 50, 60 people, it's quite a uh, bit of people, not a lot, but 20, 30. I forgot the numbers, but um, these disciples and this master, they're all thinking about one thing. Please let the lake water be clean. Usui Ganjing. In Japan. Um, and they use one hour, I think, just focus and concentrating on this dead water that is the lake. After an hour, it has been purified. Uh, the, the, the pH level is balanced now, no longer acidic. So everyone's like, thought really can change things. Uh, there's a reason why Master Ching Kung has been emphasizing it every single time he talks about it. Because right now we talk about science. Let's talk about science. But we talk about science in terms of quantum physics, not in terms of Newtonian 1800 science. That's outdated. We're talking about modern science getting closer. This kind of thing gives us confidence that what we are learning in Liao Fan is not about just trying to go back to Ming Dynasty. It's about how these people from Ming Dynasty um, or people in, from the ancient times uh, in our culture, you know, Confucius, they all teach us to be kind, to be good, to be respectful, be fearful, be relevant towards the spirits uh, because of the repercussion from them. 